Hi, uh, you and asked me to download some Ordnance Survey maps for him, so I thought I may as well kind of record this being done so everybody else can see see the process. So I'm in Ordnance Survey, I'm in Digimap, I'm in the OS data download area, and I've selected the area that you and highlighted on a on a Rome map that he sent me, and then I've chosen some. Uh, some um, products. I've, I've chosen the terrain, five contours, I've chosen the building heights, attributes, and I've chosen topography as well. And I added those to the basket. So they're already sitting in the basket, and I'll just show you what happens with the basket. So the topography, we get a choice of file format. So I want DWG for all three of these, because we're taking these into AutoCAD. And this one has a, th a choice of themes as well. You can have the standard plan, which has uh, coloured areas, or you can just have the um, plan without the coloured the coloured zones. So I'll I'll go for standard actually because um, you might want to kind of define the the colour areas as a separate layer. So uh, we request the download, and that should ping onto my email saying that there's a request being made okay so the request has been made and then give it a few seconds we should receive the uh, clearance to pick up the materials so you're never too sure when that's going to happen so I'll just pause the video there okay this is about two minutes later and because we've actually asked for quite a large area um, in three different formats that's where it took them a couple of minutes so you click on the second email and then download your data so this is the way it works for any of the, the downloads really for aerial photography or or, or the likes okay. so that's downloading I'll give it a few seconds that's with 30, 38 megabytes thereabouts not got the fastest connection here today. Weather's pretty yucky outside. <coughs> Effects. I, I have a 4G, uh, just a 4G kind of hotspot uh, router thing. Okay, so we'll look at that in the in the folder. Okay, and so here it is all packaged together. Uh, so we'll extract it to that folder, and then I'm just going to rename that to Whitfield. Well, actually, inside there, there's there's three other folders. Um, so this citations order should cover all three things that we've we've downloaded. Um, so citations orders. Let's just see. That, yeah, all three are there. So you know, you're basically kind of making sure those that information goes onto whatever uh, material that you you finally create. Okay. So I can't do that for you. You have to make sure that's all visible. But inside here, we've got two DWGs. So it's it's we're straddling a grid line. Uh, let's see that on here. We're straddling the larger grid lines for the 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 contours are on. A, I think they're on a kind of a five kilometer grid. Um, so there's going to be a bit of piecing together of material sorry went to the wrong folder there so what I do is just cut copy these out okay so I'm just going to cut these out and just pop them in the the main folder at the top so into the top oh that's a single drawing that's okay so I'll just cut that out no need to have them in the oh that didn't work Try that again. Paste that. Okay, and then the heights. That could be in two pieces as well. We'll see. Yeah, two bits for that as well. So I'm, I'm just going to call. I'm just going to rename these just because the names are going to clash a wee bit. So I'll just call this heights. And we've got heights one and two. <coughs> okay, it's best to just take this stuff at the same time, uh, whether you use it or not. Uh, it doesn't matter. So I've got terrain, topo, and heights, and we'll keep the citations and well actually don't need to keep the rest 
Okay, so now what we do is launch AutoCAD. Uh, the splash screen is on the other my other monitor, so you unfortunately you can't see that. It should be here in a second, there we go. Okay, and what I do first is open a template file that's got all the layer names and colour corrected so they'll work properly. So I've uh, this kind of regular use folder, OS base drawing 2020 layer names. Okay, so this has got a huge collection of layer names in it, which basically covers all the ones I could find on the Ordnance Survey. <coughs> And then we bring the drawings into here, and the advantage of that is that it kind of kills off any of the uh, um, geo-referencing that is attached to them. Um, and you can't bring that up as a toolbar. Actually, I'll go back to the standard workspace. I'm in 3D at the moment. Drafting annotation. Let me see. Do, 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 do. No. Well, I'll just show you. If I open one of the files directly you'll see that it has this kind of geo-referencing built into it. So we need to go downloads. And let's just rename this to Whitfield. Then I can upload the whole folder later on to OneDrive. So if I open master map topo, see there's no preview here, so it's treating it slightly differently. Uh, continue opening the drawing. Okay, and you see here it kind of knows that this has come from a GIS kind of source. Problem is, it, it kind of it's not where we actually kind of want the information. So <coughs> I don't open the files in that that method. Okay, so I'm going to close that, and what I do is just pull them into here instead. So we insert them into here. So it's I and return. Okay, I need to look outside of this drawing to find it. So we need to open a location for them. So back to the downloads. What field? So we'll bring in the topo. Uh, we'll bring in the topo first. Okay. Now it takes a few seconds because it's a big, it's a big topo. There's thousands of lines here. So this is. It's looked inside that drawing. It's found all sorts of symbols, but we're looking for the main file. There it is, come up first. Okay, I'm going to choose, oh I'm going to let the insertion point be zero, 00, so everything corresponds then. And I don't want to repeat the placement, but I do want to explode it, I want to break it up into individual components. So right click, insert, well I might as well insert and explode. And it should go to where it's supposed to be so it's off the screen at the moment it's out in the wild somewhere so if I double click it should zoom in on the on the map okay now what I'm going to do is change everything so that it's correctly colored okay I've got a couple of kind of layer hatch types here that are a bit strange I think this is kind of proposed uses I'm going to leave put those back. Okay, so what I do is select everything. Okay, and the colors and line types should be by layer. Okay, it takes a few seconds to change that, and so we want we want the line types to be by layer as well, so we can control them better then. Okay, so you notice all those those fill areas have gone red because <coughs> because this layer okay if I go to see it's kind of general surface area it's showing that that layer is red so let's make it a bit more usable we can we should be able to change the color of it and let's just go for a pale green so they should change green now okay so these this is a different type of land use okay so we need to change that to so the agricultural land. Okay, I'll use a slightly different green, I may as well. Oh, uh, maybe go lighter, actually. Okay, so we've got another layer here. So I'm just going to try and 
track down all these areas. So I've got a vegetation area. So let's make this a darker green. Okay, then we've got buildings, fill for buildings. Now we're going to do those ourselves. Okay, and similarly roads and things. So um, what I'm going to do is get to lose these areas because these are all there's there's too many of these so I'll just leave the green the green spaces really so what I'll do is make that red the current layer oh I wonder if we can sort things out by if there's anything uh, common in the names so we've got area okay so what I'll do is I'll switch all the layers off so I use the keyboard for this minus LA off star Okay, and I'll switch on just the layers that end with area. So minus LA, enter on star area. So anything that ends with area should come back on. There we go. So we can switch off the ones that we've changed now and see what we're left with. So let's have a look at the, the layers list. So right now what we could do is purge away all the layers that aren't used. Okay, so that's going to make the list much smaller. So we'll do that just now, purge. And it says, what do you want to get rid of? There's all sorts in the drawing that could go. I want to purge everything. Purge all. Purge all checked items and close. So that should make the layers list much smaller. Still pretty big like. But you see we've got the, the layers that are left switched on should be the area layers. So if I look along things, I've got track area, yeah, traffic calming area, you know, way too much information here. Unclassified area under construction, and water course area. Uh, might keep that. We'll, we'll change that to to a water colour. Maybe a bit tealish. Okay, and we'll switch that one off. Okay, let's have a look at the others then. Structure area, no, step area, not worried about that. Static water area, so that's ponds. So let's make that another shade of blue. Okay, sloping mason area, no, nope. roadside area, road area, da 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 da, pylons, path, multi surface area. That's kind of different types of paving. Um, landform area. We'll keep that. So this is kind of, you know, terrain related. So we'll keep that. Give it a different colour. Uh, electricity substation areas. Not interested in that. Cranes or conveyors. Buildings area. Um, moot point. We could keep this. Could keep this one. Um, let's keep just the build or well, we'll see what it's left see what it is, if it's actually just the buildings or if it's the gardens as well so I'll change its color so we can identify let's go brown with that okay so everything else is for binning okay yeah so it has taken just the buildings that's good so I think the rest is just too much there so we'll lose all that and put everything like all the layers back on now minus LA enter on enter star enter twice okay that's looking a bit more kind of manageable okay and then we'll do a purge again so purge okay so just some some of those AL areas area layers can go purge all checked items close so our list is getting smaller and more manageable as we go okay so that's that's the kind of cleanup so we'll save this save as and so this is Whitfield top up okay now before I go on to the next stage I'm going to bring in the other Plans. We've got two sets of uh, of terrain and two sets of, of uh, building heights as well. So we'll just insert those so that everything ends up in the same place. So 
So we want to look outside the drawing again. So let's do the terrain ones just now. You have to do them one at a time, you can't insert two at a time in AutoCAD. Okay, it's having a look at it. Give it a few seconds for the whole drawing to appear. There we go. Insert and X. Ooh. Now we'll not explode this one just now. Okay, let's take the tick off explode. We'll just insert it. Okay, and if you see what happens here, we're we're just eating into that portion of stuff, so there's a lot of this is going to be deleted. Okay, so I'll insert again. Okay, I'm on. Lost the dialog box there, let's just type letter I, there we go. Pull in another file. So it's the second terrain one now. Give it a few seconds to look through it. Right click, insert. It should join on in the right place. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle roughly around that, and this is going to be used for trimming the contours. So everything outside that white rectangle can be deleted. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just move all this to one side, do the editing, and then bring it back. Okay, so I need to move it by a specific amount. So we're looking about, um, say, let's say 10 million. 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so it's moved it 10 kilometers to the side. I can explode these two now, X and return, and then I can erase the bits I don't want. Careful. get this as manageable as possible. Okay, so everything else really needs trimmed. So I think we can lose that one. So what we use is the trim command in standard mode. It's a bit easier to use. And I can then use the edge of the box to chop off the objects. bits at the edge. So what we could do here is, is kind of isolate these layers or kind of have a look at their names at least and see what you know we could say well actually you know we need to maybe just make these stand out a bit more as contours Okay, so a bit hard to find in all of this. So uh, you, you don't think you can search for a layer name? Um, so we're looking for contour, ordinary contour line. So I'm just going to shorten its name. I'll call it contour ordinary. So this, just so we start with the word contour. that name, put it onto this one, Contour Ordinary Labels, okay, Contour Master there, Contour Master Labels, and looking for them, so it'll be be master, shouldn't it? Um, master control in there. So we're looking to if we sort the names out now, then the contour ones should be together. Okay, contour, 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 contour. Uh, I'm just going to test to see what's left if we hide these contour these layers. So 
hide that one, that one. So we've got so that's that labels. So we can hide those. Uh, there's a few still. These are master labels. And then so there's still a couple of layers left here. Spot heights and right, so there's two spot height layers we've got to change. So I'm just gonna add the word contour onto that. These will probably be on the main map as well. Uh, they tend to be. Okay, so we got laborious this, but it's kind of worth doing. Okay, so I'll switch them off. Does it leave us anything else? Looks like it's clear now in the background there. Good. So we've got all the everything is now starting with contours. So we can quite easily control those afterwards. We can kind of weed them out. Okay, so I've put everything back on now. And we're on star. And we can move these back into position. So it's 10 million. Okay, and then the when you bring in this, the building's heights, they're just a single layer anyway. Okay, so we'll insert those. That's not bringing up the dialog box when you do that. You have to use that instead. Libraries, so load. These are big. These these are really slow the machine down. So <coughs> don't expect this to happen like in seconds. There's thousands of buildings. Okay, I'm happy for this one to go to zero zero and explode. So right click insert and explode so they're going to appear here but the majority of them will be will be deleting so it takes a wee while for it to work out this thousands of little solid blocks here they come I think there we go there's one set and then we want the other ones Probably not so many on this one, it might come in a bit quicker. Come on, just thinking about it. Come on. just got to be patient it is working on it it's this is a big big file now so we have to be patient <clears throat> now when you when it's not in GIS software this material is heavy duty you know, we'll, we'll do a tally of how many objects we've got once we uh, have everything in place and you'd be pretty shocked you know thousands upon thousands of lines and shapes Sometimes you do that. Do this again. I've found this before. If I if I kind of pretend I'm doing it again, it kind of kicks it up the backside. Um, there we go. Yeah, I've had that before. It kind of goes into its own little dream world. Okay, so obviously different there. So insert and explode, and they should appear in a few seconds. Right, here they come. There we go. So that's all the buildings in. So whoa. But as you know, as with the contours, a lot of this can be deleted. So we'll get rid of this big chunk of buildings. It tells you on the screen how many. That's eighteen thousand two hundred twenty-five buildings in that area. Got a small fly here that's bugging me. So off you go. This is picking up you know the centre of town as well here. Another eighteen thousand there. That's 
uncanny, wasn't it? Both of them were about 18,000. What's more, there 4,000 buildings there. And just a couple of hundred there. Okay. So what we do now is purge that, and that clears away all. It forgets these other things existed at, at all. So I'll do. A, we'll save it first, and then purge it. Okay. Nothing else there. Oh, blocks. So that'll be the main plans. So. Purge all, purge all, off they go, and that's it, close now. So what I'll do is just try and twist, tw twist this over so you can see that we've got 3D information here. It's going to strain a bit to do this, it's a lot of 3D information there. There it goes I think. Once it's kind of pushed this all onto the graphics card properly then it, it's it can be moved around okay. Come on. Let's have a good think about it. So you don't see my cursor in AutoCAD yet. So it's, I know it's up to, there we go, something's happening now. There we go, whoa. Right, it's flipped right over there. I need my cursor back before I can risk doing anything. There we go. So what I'll do is come to here, there's a little symbol you can use and it turns it to faces and we should be able to rotate it but it's painfully slow because it's heavy 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 material but you can see the contours and the buildings sit at the correct contour height okay but there isn't a surface there to use Pushing it to the limit here, it's very slow. Okay, but generally we want to be in plan view, and <coughs> uh, you know I'm not printing out the, the the contour information just yet. If you know we can generate that quite easily, so I'm just going to freeze those layers off. Same similarly with the buildings. Or information. So I'm going to freeze some other layers as well. Okay, so we're going to print this off kind of piece at a time. Um, so what we don't want is the text because it's not going to be legible. You know, you put your own text on. So we, we kind of need to find any of these text layers. So some of the areas. So we can, if we switch off all the area layers, so minus LA enter off so it's star area that's nice and quick uh, then we can layers with text on them I think they end with the word text da -da -da -da. They, they end up with text so we, we've already got one switched off there so you see them here text 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 we can try that first that might be quicker minus LA off star text okay that's got mm, looks like it's got I can't see any text anywhere else ah, something there that's slipped through the net yeah, so I've got a little item here that slipped through the net something to do with the drainage a drainage area um, might be the only piece on it so it's probably one of these suds features. Um, okay, and it looks like we've got a. Not sure if that's a contour or a parliamentary type boundary. It's showing up as if it's it's a district boundary. So that's the kind of thing I don't really want to see on a finished plan. Okay, similarly these strange markers. Okay, now we've got a bridge or a weir, I think that's a weir, so I'm just going to delete that. 
Okay, just having a look around, see if there's anything else I want to get rid of at the moment. Okay, another layer we will isolate is the uh, building divisions. Okay, and you can see here some of these layers are on, so that's an inferred property line, so it knows where the fence is there, but there's, there's a fence missing on these properties, so that can stay, that's okay. Um, <coughs> Okay, so this would be kind of like the overall printout. Okay, so only the only the pink items are, are what we want to see with a, a reasonably strong line. Okay, everything else is going to be much thinner. So we'll do we'll do one with the buildings and one without, and then we'll we'll break it down a bit more for a few layers. <coughs> so I want to go to a layout now and. Probably best to choose the biggest piece of paper that's on offer because it's a big plan. So we'll modify this layout and we want to generate PDFs. Okay, and use a big, big piece of paper, full bleed A0. Okay. Oh, we've got even bigger pieces of paper now. Four AOs and that. I think a standard A0 will be okay, full bleed. Uh, where are you? Oh, I think I'll just go for it. It's a bit strange. ISO A0, there we go. Let's go with that. So I'm not getting full bleed, but it doesn't matter. And I use a special pen setup that knows that the pink lines are going to be thick and the will make all the others thin. Okay, so the pink look color on screen we'll use 0.6 for that and what I'll do is I'll make all the others thin. Okay, so line weight let's just use 0.5 for that. Okay, so all the other colors above color 10 they stay as they are so the colors we chose for the for the green areas they would stay colored okay so we save and close okay that's in effect so if we we'll just test that and what we should see is basically black and white so let's just preview that that's working okay we've got a couple of items here that are in non-standard colors so that was that inferred boundary line wasn't it so but see the problem here well this piece of paper is very small so the um, so the lines are all look as if they're very close together okay so okay that and close and then what we'll do is test we've got to test the drawing scales now so we'll make this bigger make this it's called a viewport Make it just slightly bigger than the the printable area. Okay, activate the view, zoom extents, and then we can test scales. I'll get rid of the grid. Okay, so zoom, and then say let's try one to five thousand. So it'd be Z enter one forward slash five thousand. XP. Okay, so that definitely fits. So we'll try one to 2500. Okay, zoom one over 2500 XP. That's looking just about right, really, isn't it? So that's just kind of the biggest architectural scale we can get on an A0. Okay, I don't need the white, the, the rectangle around the side, and we've just got to track down that inferred boundary layer to uh, to change its color. So we've got these these are inland water lines they I think they may be showing up the wrong color. Uh, it was the boundaries wasn't it? <coughs> was it inferred boundary line? Inferred property closing link? That was probably the one. So so we're looking for the ones that are 
outside of my colours. So we've got building division. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of colour number ten here. Conduit strains. So we'll sort these out by colour. And I want I don't want anything to be showing red, so I'm just gonna pick all of those and make them the named colour red so they, the lines actually become black when they print. Okay, let's do a test print again. So let's plot, preview, and we've now got what we really want, which is the buildings standing out and the uh, everything else much, much thinner. So we can't get the lines any thinner than that. Okay, the only way to do that would be to print this in portions. You know, half of it on one sheet of very large paper, half of it on another sheet. So this is how we set this up in AutoCAD. Okay, so this is all layers. So let's uh, let's plot that one as all layers. Let's save these to the downloads. Okay, Whitfield all layers. All layers at one to twenty five hundred. Okay. Zoom in on that. So that's our very, very crisp PDF. Now we could do the same with all the areas on, and so it's in kind of colours. So let's see what that looks like if we turn all the area layers on. Minus LA on star area. Okay, this is going to be much more colourful. So we want the layers to be behind the lines. So I'm just going to do something before I do that. Um, Okay, and I'm just going to pull all these objects to the front. So there's a thing called draw order. Grab everything, and I want to bring them to the front. So that makes sure the coloured areas are kind of behind the lines. Let's go back to the layout. Minus LA on star area. Try that again, must have spelled it wrong. Minus LA on star area. That's better. Okay, plot. Let's have a preview on that, so there'll be a lot more colour this time. Quite punchy. Quite like that. Okay, and plot. All layers and areas. Do turn the layers, the areas off, and then we'll send these out as separate layers. So we'll, we want to uh, do a version that is just the buildings. So there is a command to isolate a layer. Uh, if I can find it, current was it isolate? Where are you? There we are. Isolate. Isolate. Mm, need to. Need to do this in more space and need to get a bit closer. So if we isolate just the buildings, okay, back to the layout, and plot that. Okay, topo buildings. Um, to twenty five hundred. Okay. Undo that. 
we want to switch off the buildings this time. Okay, there's nothing else. And we're saying um, maybe have roads and paths separate. Um, actually, these features are a bit annoying. I shouldn't have included these. Um, what I'm going to do is freeze those, I'll, I'll maybe just remake because they, they do kind of clutter things, those kind of area change marks, should have had those frozen ok so frozen those, but I will switch off roadways just the roads, I think we'll just leave it as roads and everything else can stay on ok, let's go back to the layout I'll call this general lines. Okay, so that's, we'll call this general. Okay, and undo. Bring back the roads, good. Okay, we want to freeze that again, don't we? Let's just come back. Okay, so we want to isolate just the roads now. Okay, plot that. everything on, I'll just remake these but without without those road surface changes. So this is all layers and areas, just remake these. So big print that one. Then without the areas. Here we are. Not areas. Okay, that should be all good, so just save that, and then what should happen in Photoshop, if we open, let's do this, let's start with the general lines, so into Whitfield, we'll open the general one, actually we could do with a version that's just the coloured areas, couldn't we? Um, Okay, so that's the page size. So we use media box, so we need to be consistent with this. So we'll, we'll go for 300 pixels per inch. Okay, so these will be transparent. So if I zoom in, we should see something here. So the lines are very fine. Okay. So we'll create a new layer in this one for the background. Okay, move it under there. So this is the general lines. Okay, we want the background, pour some white paint into that. You should see a drawing now. Okay. We'll save this, which is a big, big file. So this is just going to be Whitfield one to A0 one to 2500. And Whitfield, yep, good. Okay, and then we open the other layers now, and but send the information across to this one. And they should correspond, he says, hopefully. So we'll take the roads. 
So we'll do one at a time. <coughs> okay, let's rename this to roads. Okay, so it's very similar to what we did with the with the individual PDFs from from Rome, from Digimap Rome. So we duplicate the layer to the other file. Okay, have a look at that, and the roads should be exactly where we want them. Okay, but we've got control of the roads now. We've still got these road surface changes here. Oh, crikey. Uh, so what I don't want to see is these road change things, so let's, let's remake that. So why is that coming back? They're a different colour now. These are different layer again. General line. General line. Oh, we can't get rid of those ones because they're, we'd have to manually delete these, I think. Oh, that's too too laborious, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, but we do need an areas layer anyway, so let's, uh, let's switch everything off. Let me turn the current one off. Start area. And we will just get rid of the. So we'll make this one current and switch off this one. So we've just got the coloured areas now. Okay, Whitfield. And this is areas. few seconds, here we go. This can sometimes not look too good when you... you I, I think you'd be better colouring using Photoshop. Sometimes you end up with lines and... Oh, that's too bad there though. Okay. So let's open, open the buildings and the areas now. Buildings... Field buildings. Okay. Call this buildings. Did I spell that right? Buildings. Okay, duplicate that across to the other file. Okay, close that. It's looking much more punchy now, I like that. Field areas. So this was we're going to put this into the background. Okay. Much more material in this. It's not you know these are basically you know 99% nothing and 1% lines. This is a much bigger beast of a layer. This one areas. Duplicate the layer to there. Close this one. Okay, but the areas really need to be behind the other objects, so you see these stripy lines? This is the problem with printing that from... Okay, but if we put it behind, we've got a bit more kind of crispness and impact. So as long as, you know, if you want to take a portion of this, then, you know, as long as you keep all the layers in the same positions, you, know, you could, <coughs> if we save this one, And then, say we want just a portion, maybe this area here. Okay, but remember to save as. Okay, so I'm not sure what this bit's called. Uh, detail, let's call it, just call it detail. So I'm not sure what the street name is there. Okay, so you've still got control over it. You, know, you could make those weaker. And that's the kind of beauty of having it as layers. You've got much more kind of graphic control. Okay, so hopefully that's kind of showing you how, how to deal with the AutoCAD map information. And remember your citations, you know, you need to put whatever bits you use, they need to be on here. Okay, cheers.